Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the outstanding pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm okay, Brian. Uh, Thanksgiving coming up next week, question mark. So what do we got to talk about on Horse Center? No, no questions about it, Matt. Thanksgiving is definitely next week. We are going to unveil. It's always exciting to talk about the Kentucky Derby, and we're going to unveil our first look at the 2023 Kentucky Derby, Matt. It's, it's about five and a half months away, so plenty of time to start thinking about it. We've already had one future wager. We're going to have another one soon. Without further ado, Matt, we're going to unveil our Sweet 16, our Top 16. Now, these might not be the best two-year-olds in the country. Many of them are. Many of them aren't. But these are 16 horses that Matt and I identified as leaders in the early race to see who ends up in the starting gate for the Kentucky Derby. We're going to go in alphabetical order. And, folks, there are a lot of good horses that we could have added on these lists, but we didn't because we kept it down to 16. Here we go. Bob Baffert starts the list, Matt, with a couple names that we see that are pre pretty similar here. Arabian Night, though, Matt, is the uh, 2.3 million, I'll say it again, $2.3 million two-year-old in training purchase. The son of Uncle Mo looked the part when he debuted recently at Caneland. Yeah, looked the part. Certainly it was a, a debut that came on Breeders' Cup weekend if I'm not mistaken, and of course was a heavy favorite and ran the way so many of these Bob Baffert's uh, uh, run at first asking. I think, I don't know, by my count, I think we've got four Bob Baffert horses in our Sweet 16. And Matt, that's right. We're, we're not going to uh, disclude the Bob Baffert horses. Of course, we expect the Bob Baffert horses to be in the Kentucky Derby. He is not asked to attend the Kentucky Derby as a trainer again next year. But uh, we're assuming, just like last year, one way or the other, these Baffert horses will be in. Arabian Night, you know, the, the big purchase price early this year, and then uh, a, a lot of talk about him before his debut. I thought he faced a good, uh, solid, well-liked field of maidens at Keeneland on Breeders' Cup Saturday. Ran fast, was geared down late, looked awfully good. Arabian Night certainly is going to be one of the most talked about horses heading in to New Year's 2023. The next horse on the list, Arabian Lion, suffered his first loss also the same weekend, the day before, Matt, that I thought that was one of the best two-year-old races I've seen when he was second in a seven furlong allowance race at Keeneland. Yeah, and uh, you know we don't expect these uh, these Baffert horses to start and to, to I mean to to lose uh, early on, but you know they're, they're young horses at this point. Um, as you were talking about Baffert, um, you know with the Kentucky Derby future wagers, as long as they still run in under his name then they will not appear as an individual betting interest in Kentucky Derby future wagers, the ones that are sponsored by Churchill Downs going forward. Um, Arabian Night was the, is currently in this week's latest Las Vegas Kentucky Derby lines, is the favorite at 10 to 1. Yeah, that's interesting, Matt. That's a good point. You can bet on the Baffert horses in other places like Las Vegas, but uh, uh, not with the Churchill Downs future wagers. Arabian Night getting a lot of love uh, for his maiden win. But I wouldn't discount the son of Justify Arabian Lions. Obviously, same, same ownership, same trainer. Uh, and again, that, that allowance race at Keeneland where he was a good sack and they were way ahead of the rest. Arabian Lion is another one to watch, as is Awesome Strong, Matt. Now, Awesome Strong is a horse who was brought up to Keeneland to, to run in the uh, uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but he had uh, a little shit issue, and uh, they decided to back off a little bit on Awesome Strong. But uh, Jorge Delgado has a horse who swept the Florida Sire Series here. Yeah, and we've seen some of these horses uh, in the past heading into the Kentucky Derby and, and uh, uh, run really well, as th this guy has done down in Florida, a son of 
uh, Awesome Slew. Yeah, there's uh, Awesome Slew, of course, was the talented son of Awesome again. There's plenty of distance breeding on this horse. And I also like the fact that he's won going from four and a half furlongs all the way up to eight and a half furlongs. I do, however, question whether Awesome Slew will, or Awesome Strong, excuse me, a son of Awesome Slew, will end up having the class and the overall talent of some of these others. Matt, he's not even the one I like best of the Gulfstream horses, but uh, yeah, four for four and four easy wins at Gulfstream Park so far, and a horse who's won three stakes already. So he deserves to be on this list. As is Blazing Sevens, Matt, uh, an impressive winner of a sloppy edition of the grade one champagne. And you might tell me, well, Blazing Sevens wasn't good enough in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But I think there are four horses who ran well in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Matt. Blazing Sevens, the son of good magic, was one of them. Yeah, that's correct, Brian. And we've got the top four finishers from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile in our Sweet 16. And, and they're not in there just because they were, you know, finished in the top four uh, in the juvenile, because as we know in the past, the the juvenile hasn't been a great uh, indicator or a great producer of uh, Kentucky Derby winners. But, you know, I thought this year's uh, uh, field in the juvenile was, uh, was a pretty good one. Uh, Blazing Sevens for Chad Brown was third in the hopeful before that sloppy track win in the Champagne. Son of Good Magic, um, and that one was in the first Kentucky Derby future wager and closed at 20 to 1, but keeping in mind that that first Kentucky Derby wager did close before the juvenile was run. Yeah, there's a couple of things I want to mention about Blazing Sevens. Uh, first of all, maybe a horse to keep an eye on if, if we do have a wet track coming up to uh, big Kentucky Derby preps. We're also talking about Kentucky Derby preps of Europe because, of course, the preps start soon. And uh, Blazing Sevens will be a, keep, uh, a horse to keep an eye on, on an off track, perhaps. But as a grandson of Curlin, one of our best sires of the last 15 years or so, uh, I think Blazing Sevens, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what uh, uh, what good magic can do as a sire, the, maybe the best son of Curlin uh, early on in his career. And Blazing Sevens will be representing Curlin as a grandson. All right, Matt, we're going to go on to the next four. Again, we're moving alphabetically here, folks. This is not in order of preference. The next four will include this group. And of course, the name that jumps off the page, Matt, is the horse on top. Another Bob Baffert, Cave Rock, heavy favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but he got beat. He got beat, but he ran a pretty good race still in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yeah, that is true, Brian. Um, having had having had won his first three races, very very impressively for uh, Mr. Baffert. Um, I think you and I mentioned the same thing um, in our Breeders' Cup review show last week that we thought that Cave Rock left at least some significant part of his race on the track before he even got in the gate. But apparently from what I've heard and read um, and heard Baffert saying, uh, he has always been a high strung horse that is going to need to learn to contain that energy and funnel that energy in a more positive way moving ahead. Keeping all that in mind, finishing second in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile field was pretty good. Yeah, and, and and we talked about Blazing Sevens coming out of a fourth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Cave Rock coming out of a second. I should say that the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, you mentioned, doesn't have the greatest history translating to Kentucky Derby success. But on the other hand, the last time the Breeders' Cup was at Keeneland, uh, we saw horses out of that Breeders' Cup Juvenile run very well in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, horses like Essential Quality and Hot Rod yes. Charlie didn't win the Derby. Uh, but ran certainly ran very well coming from that Keeneland Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Cave Rock, yeah, he did not look good before the race, but three big wins in California and still not looking good before the race. Uh, ran a good second on the lead, held on well for second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Maybe he has things to work on mentally before we get to a crazy environment like the Kentucky Derby. Next on the list, Matt, is Champion's Dream. Champion's Dream. 
Uh, you haven't heard a lot about him probably, but he's a very well-bred son of Justify. And if you look at his form, you could maybe draw a line through the slop race. So on a fast track, he's been finishing well, including a recent stakes win at Aqueduct. Yeah, and keeping in mind, Brian, uh, uh, you know what you what you said about the really impressive performances, both of them on fast tracks, and then taking a loss on the slop. So we'll see going ahead, ahead um, what uh, Champions Dream will do. Um, maybe with that victory in the Nashua, trainer Danny Gargan will. Uh, probably have more options to either run this guy in Florida next or stay on the trail um, in New York, which was and has been much more productive the last couple of years than it had been several years before. Yeah, certainly last year, the Remsen was quite good with uh, with an ex exciting, if not controversial, uh, stretch battle with uh, uh, Mo Donegal and Zandon. And this year, uh, I would expect to see Champion Stream, who's coming off that national win, where he finished pretty well. I know the time wasn't all that, but Champion Stream probably caught the worst part of the track during that day and uh, might be still a horse to watch, probably Remsen down. Next horse on the list, Matt, if we're talking about impressive debut winners, Echo again has to be mentioned because Echo again, a son of Gunrunner, got a whole lot of uh, talk after his debut win at Saratoga. He couldn't back it up next time, though, when he stretched out for a graded stakes attempt. Yeah, that's true. And and I think, as we know, Steve Asmussen really makes it a goal to bring out some of his good two-year-olds and have them ready to roll up at uh, – up at Saratoga, young horse, you know, he didn't come back and run as well on, uh, uh, you know, the the different racing surface down in Kentucky. But, you know, I certainly wouldn't discount that this horse uh, after that, as we know, Asmus and runners have a way of getting better and better as they mature. I'm sure this guy will get some, a little bit of time over the winter. Um following that race in Kentucky and we'll see where he goes uh after that after that it's interesting folks as we you know as we run through this list of horses uh keep an eye on the names of the sires in there uh, it, it's a lot of horses that ran really well pretty recently names like arrogate and justify and gun runner and good magic and uh, uh so uh, it's interesting a whole new a whole new breed of stallions taking over yeah absolutely we've seen that in recent years where uh, the young sires are doing well and young sires that of course we remember we'll miss arrogate but gun runner looks like the top young sire in the country right now and echo again i, I you know it would be easy have to have uh, not included him on this list matt after a poor iroquois but i, I don't think that was the true echo again uh, this looks very good in workouts before and after. I'll mention he's working well uh, since that loss in the Iroquois. In the Iroquois, he was hung out wide, ran fast, battled on the lead a little bit, and and, and then didn't show up late. But uh, I would think Echo, again, is a horse who really bounced back. And with those workouts, good workouts since, he might bounce back sooner rather than later. Uh, another horse who was quite impressive in his debut, Matt, uh, while Echo again is a windchill homebred for Steve Asmussen, Extra Anejo is one that they uh, paid a pretty good penny for, a son of into mischief, a well-bred horse. He looked the part uh, winning his debut, which was at Keeneland uh, a little farther back than Breeders' Cup. Yeah, and, and he did look particularly good uh, in that race, winning by almost uh, ten lengths. Um, was in the uh, in that first Kentucky Derby Future Pool, closing at twelve to one, and currently uh, in Las Vegas, you can get eighteen to one on Extra Anejo. Yeah, Extra Anejo uh, certainly has been well liked since that impressive win at Keeneland. Uh, that race was over the beard course. Uh, and if you don't know, that's a little bit farther than the normal seven furlongs, which they run quite often at Keeneland. So don't look at that seven furlong time on uh, uh, face value because it's longer than seven furlong, that beard course at Keeneland. 
All right, Matt, we are halfway done with our Sweet 16. We've got eight down and we've got eight to go next on the list. There's some big names we haven't seen yet. Uh, for, for instance, Matt, where is the two-year-old chip? There he is. The horse that everybody expects to be the two-year-old champion, Forte. Matt and I missed him in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Hopefully we don't make that same mistake moving forward, Matt, because Forte will be a deserving two-year-old champion. Oh, absolutely. I mean, with his record of four wins from five starts, three grade one wins already, he sits on top of the uh, Kentucky Derby points qualifying list right now by a, a big margin. He probably has enough points already. Uh, I think he's got 40 points already to get into the Kentucky Derby field. Um, uh, Todd Pletcher, you know, will have plenty, plenty of options with Forte. Um, obviously, uh, liking Keeneland, uh, as we know from uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile win, so they could go back to the the races at Keeneland to the Bluegrass. I'm sure he will be at, uh, at uh, Palm Beach Downs in Florida training for the winter so he's got all those races in florida also yeah absolutely there, there's a lot to like with forte uh most of all his breeders cup juvenile performance he's got a, just a little bit of tactical speed but certainly he's proven he can pass horses he won a tough battle the race before he's already got two grade one wins going two turns not to mention three overall grade one wins forte pletcher's best right now well the best two year country best two-year-old male in the country, the best two-year-old in the country this year he's he's been. So Forte, a horse uh, certainly that uh, should have a strong spot here in our Sweet 16, and he does. He's also a horse who's got some uh, 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 distance pedigree uh, in, in both sides of his breeding, so it'll be interesting to see what Forte can do off such a good two-year-old year. Next horse on the list, Matt, is a, a two-year-old I like a lot, and, and you might not know it if you haven't been watching races other than Greatest Stakes because Giant Mischief has yet to make his stakes debut. But a well-bred son of Into Mischief, we'll see if he can get 10 furlongs. But he was good at Horseshoe Indianapolis in his debut, overcoming trouble, going short. Then he went seven furlongs against the heavily uh, favored and uh, well-liked Arabian Lion. And uh, Giant Mischief fought him off on the rail, uh, beat him in the last uh, 100 yards in that allowance race. Like I said, it was one of the most impressive two-year-old races I've seen all year. Matt, they finished no less than 17 and a half lengths over the next best in a pretty big allowance field at Keeneland. Yeah, Brian, and, and looking at what you mentioned that this horse – made his debut at Horseshoe, Indiana. That should not in any way be viewed as a negative because Brad Cox frequently uh, starts horses first time at Horseshoe, Indiana. And he's done that with some very good horses, whether they've been uh, uh, potential derby horses or, 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 or some of his really great fillies and mares that they have uh, he has uh, turned out. But if you noticed from that uh, graphic, and I'm sure it'll be back up on the screen in a minute or two. Uh, wow. Okay. I see it there, Brian. Brad Cox, Brad Cox, Brad Cox. We got three of his horses coming up just coincidentally here um, in alphabetical order. We mentioned that we had four from Bob Baffert in our Sweet 16. We got four from Brad Cox in here too. Yeah, Brad Cox is well represented in the two-year-olds. He's got some good-looking two-year-old fillies that have uh, run recently as well. And Matt's right, Monomoy Girl for 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 one yes. with the horse who uh, ran early. That is what now is called Horseshoe Indianapolis. Giant Mischief looks very good to me in his first two starts. Matt, I'm going to stop real quick here. We've gone through 10. We still have six to go. But I'm worried that the uh, Kentucky Derby, the 2023, I'm really worried, Matt. The 2023 Kentucky Derby could become a real shit show, and and, and perhaps I uh, overstate my worry a little bit. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're playing with that name a little bit. Hit show. It's not it's not the other thing that I said. It's hit show. 
a well-bred son of Candy Ride. Why not Candy Ride? Candy Ride, I think people forget about him as one of the best hires in the country. There's that trainer again, Brad Cox, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right about Candy Ride. Year after year after year, Candy Ride uh, turns out some really, really good horses and, and certainly tons of value with him uh, with him as a, as a sire. This one for Brad Cox did not debut at Horseshoe, Indiana. This one debuted at Keeneland, won by more than five lengths after running into some traffic during that race. Yeah, I, I like that, Matt. I, I like that he's already overcome some trouble in that race and still proved much the best. Hit show is definitely one that I'm looking forward to, and he's well-bred on both sides of that pedigree. Let's keep going with the Brad Cox string, Matt. The next one, I think yeah, we could have had it uh, off the list because he's coming off a fourth in his second career race, but I still there's something I still like about this Bolt Doro Colt. Instant coffee, another well-bred cult for trainer Brad Cox. Uh, I think he beat a good horse in his debut. He beat a horse called Arthur's Ride in his debut at Saratoga. He came back. I think I thought he was too far off the pace, but obviously that uh, Breeders' Futurity, the grade one Breeders' Futurity stretching out to a mile 16th came back as a key race because Forte moved off that one and won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yeah, and you know it was it, it, it was a big field as you mentioned, Brian, a very competitive field, a lot to ask for, uh, ask of a young horse like this. Um, you mentioned Bolt Doro, another one of these young, youngish sires that we were talking about earlier in the show, and, and he's already produced uh, several promising runners. Yeah, a talented son of Medaglia Doro, so it should become as no surprise that Bolt Doro is becoming a nice young sire and instant coffee despite the fourth in the breeders futurity is one that we have our eye on who might be able to move forward off that performance all right matt four to go let's do it we got four more we got some big names i'm gonna say it matt it, it probably won't come to fruition by the way this is our fourth straight brad cox i i, I beat you to the punch there oh, but yeah. it, if there was one horse right now who I had to put, we didn't do one through 16, we did alphabetical, but if there was one horse I had to put at number one right now, I don't know if it wouldn't be Loggins because that debut was really good and that performance in the Breeders' Futurity, which has since been flattered, obviously, was also really good. Yeah, I agree with you, Brian. Uh, um, out of Ghost Stapper, so here we've got, a, here we've got one of the more veteran sires, but from the uh, Loggins by the great, uh, sired by the great Ghost Zapper. Um, yeah, a very impressive debut and a very impressive second behind Forte uh, um, for Brad Cox. We'll see where where uh, Loggins ends up running. I think Brad Cox frequently has a, a big band of horses at the fairgrounds in the winter. I'm not sure about this year and, and already likes Keeneland, but I agree. Uh, um, even though he's uh, one win, one second, he's got a look of a horse who is going to do better with longer distances as the Derby Trail heats up. And that may be one of the reasons that he we will see him at fairgrounds with the uh, lengthening of the Derby preps that they instituted last year. Yeah, Loggins was very impressive in that Breeders' Futurity. It became more so when Forte did what he did in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Loggins ran a very good race because Forte and Irad Ortiz were were crowding him, to say the least, uh, in that stretch run. And Loggins just kept on running uh, off of only a debut performance. So certainly Forte had him in experience there. Forte came back big in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Loggins, on the other hand, Cox decided, hey, this is, this is a Kentucky Derby horse. I have no doubt about that. And, and Brad Cox seemed to be saying he doesn't have doubt about that because he could have run Loggins as probably the third choice or so, third or fourth choice in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And, and it looks like he would have had a real shot. Uh, but he decided to, uh, to, to give him a little bit of time. And uh, this expensive horse who's looked so good in his first two starts will wait for a three-year-old run pointing for the Kentucky Derby. 
Matt Sappy Joseph has been uh, has become a mainstay with uh, with with these uh, three year old preps, Kentucky Derby preps, pretty much all year long. But especially the Kentucky Derby preps, especially down in Florida, Mr. Ripple. I guess I mentioned earlier that I didn't think Awesome Strong was the most impressive two year old male who's run at Gulfstream Park this year because I think that goes to Mr. Ripple. Sana dialed in, debuted at a mile, and he did really good. Uh, he 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 made it, things look easy in winning that one mile debut at Gulfstream Park. Yeah. And, and uh, I think that's noteworthy that uh, Safi Joseph had faith that uh, Mr. Ripple would be able to handle the mile going uh, at first asking. Uh, um, yeah. And Safi, the last few years he's had, he's been p- picking up a, uh, a derby prep in Florida at Gulfstream during the champions meet. Yeah, Safi Joseph uh, is uh, here to stay, and Mr. Ripple, uh, by the way, Sana dialed in, dialed in, ran a very good Kentucky Derby years ago. Next on the list, Ma- National Treasure, I-, I guess, you know, you got Cave Rock, who beat him twice in a row, and you got horses like Arabian Night, who people have already jumped on as, as the Baffert with all the potential, but I'll tell you what, National Treasure has done little wrong, Sana Quality Road. Uh, he was a little farther back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile than I thought he would be. Not, not, not too far back by any means, but he was a little farther back in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Four horses ran well. He was third of the four. He wasn't beaten all that much by Forte and Cave Rock. Uh, a nice debut win, a good second place finish in, in, in his second start. And uh, he was outside, I think, in the starting gate in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, uh, from the Bob uh, Baffert horses that we've mentioned, uh, there are there are people out west and around the country that 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 think National Treasure might be one of uh, one of Baffert's top horses. I think he's shown a little bit more poise and a little more a little bit more settled than uh, uh, certainly Cave Rock uh, uh, has and and. Three starts, a win, a second, and a third, and and ran well in all of them. Ran well in all of them, and Quality Road, another sire that that we like quite a bit. Uh, Quality Road continues to have good horses. National Treasure, I think, is already proven as a very good horse. Might get better at three. Sweet 16, Matt. Number 16, that's it. That's the list. And I mentioned earlier how much Arabian night cost as a two-year-old in training, but uh, Signator was one of the most expensive yearlings uh, uh, of a year ago. And uh, this son of Tappet looks like he should run all day long. Shug McGahey, you got to like that. I like his first two races. Yeah, you got to like his first two races, a win and a second, both of them coming at Aqueduct. Uh, particularly noteworthy is that both of them came from off the pace, and and uh, since racing moved back to Aqueduct after Saratoga with the Belmont uh, meeting run at Aqueduct, and now they're you know regular Aqueduct meet uh, going on. Um, Aqueduct has not been a place where it has been easy to come off the pace, so. Uh, it's particularly noteworthy that with that running style and being a son of Tappet and a, a pedigree for a horse that is going to do better as races get longer, um, Signator, uh, deserving member of our Sweet 16. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and uh, assuming that he comes back for the Remsen, I'm not sure yet, but if he does come back for the Remsen, I would think he would be the horse to beat in the Remsen off his two maiden performances. Had a little bit of trouble early in both, rallied nicely in both second, and then an easy win last time when he stretched out to a mile. So Signator, certainly a horse to watch, as are all 16 of our Sweet 16. Uh, I'm sure we offended, insulted, and slighted many people by not including their horse on this first Sweet 16, but we recognize that this easily could have been 25, 30, or more. These are our 16 right now, right today. It'll change, of course, in the next five and a half months as we're leading up to the Kentucky Derby. But it was fun to go over these very talented horses full of potential. 
as we look ahead early on to next year's Kentucky Derby. On that note, Matt, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, and uh, you know, our 16, it's not really a particularly uh, wacky group, as we mentioned before. Uh, uh, between between Baffert and Cox, they've got half the horses on the uh, on the list. Um, only one from Pletcher, only one from uh, Chad Brown. I don't know. I have a feeling uh, uh, there'll be some more of them popping up. We said the top four from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Eight of these horses um, uh, are uh, in the are, are in the top odds at in Las Vegas. So um, you know. We got a good mix of some horses with coming off maiden wins, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, um, other good stakes performers. So I think it's an, a, a, a good variety of horses to start us off thinking about the Kentucky Derby. Absolutely, Matt. Well said. And uh, Cyclone Mischief. Cyclone Mischief, Matt. That was my number 17. I have a, a, a friend or two who's connected to Cyclone Mischief, and, and and I'm sorry he didn't quite make the list, but if we went to 17, Cyclone Mischief would have been on the list as well. Anywho, Matt, it's been another fun edition of Horse Center with you, and uh, we, as always, we thank all of you out there for watching Horse Center each and every week. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that. We also want to thank our sponsor, The Best contest site out there that's derby wars thanks to candace curtis for the cover page next week we'll be back with big races to come in the next few weeks next week we'll uh we'll highlight the clark rich strike looking to run in the clark as well as a, a, another race or two so we'll see you right here before the holiday thanksgiving on horse center see you then <laughs>